are going to go through our predictions for the 2023 Oscars. We are less than two weeks away, and there's a lot of stuff to talk about. Jade, how are you doing today? I'm good. It's one of my days off from work, so, you know, it's a, it's a good day. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. Well, how are you feeling about going to this year's Oscars? We've had a lot of good movies in the past year or so. What are some ones you're looking to talk about or see win big? Um, I think, obviously... A contender for me and I know for you as well is going to be everything everywhere all at once. Um, that is, I feel like the talk of Twitter, Instagram, TikTok in terms of movies. So, I mean, and that's a movie that I love near and dear. It's my top movie of 2022. So, I mean, that's the one that I'm really hoping for, for almost every category, I think at this point. So that's the one that I want to talk about. <laughs> I completely agree. What Daniels did with that movie and Michelle Yeoh and Kihei Kwan are all phenomenal. I'm so excited to see them get their more due. Hopefully in the first of the categories, which we see them nominated in is Best Supporting Actress, where we see Stephanie Asu, Jamie Lee Curtis, both from Everything Everywhere at Once, mm-hmm. Carrie Condon from The Banshees of Inisherin, Hung Chow from The Whale, and Angela Bassett from Black Panther Wakanda Forever, all nominated for this award. Angela Bassett took home the winner at Golden Globes and... Jamie Lee Curtis won this past weekend at the SAG Awards. Jade, who do you think is going to take home the Best Supporting Actress Oscar? It's really hard to say because there's a lot of, I should say there's, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis is just a huge name in the movie industry itself, as well as Angela Bassett. And it's nice to see her being nominated for a Marvel movie, which is, I believe it's a first for uh, this category. And so, yeah, I, you know, I love everybody. I, I saw Banshees of Inna Sharon and I really liked it. Uh, Carrie Condon was really good. Um, I just don't know if it's worthy of a winning uh, of a winning title in this category. I love Jamie Lee Curtis, obviously, in Everything Everywhere All at Once. I just don't even think she's in it enough to warrant a win. Um, I didn't see The Whale, so I can't speak to that. And Angela Bassett, again, of course, was phenomenal in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. But my hope is that Stephanie Hsu wins it because she, I feel like in this full, you know, movie, the awards and everything, she is not getting enough recognition and she's who I'm rooting for personally. I do think, though, it'll either be between Angela Bassett or Jamie Lee Curtis, but my hope is for Stephanie Hsu. I, I really hope Stephanie Hsu gets her due here, too. I thought going before any of the award shows started that this award was a three-legged race between Angela, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Stephanie Hsu. This past weekend, Jamie Lee Curtis was a bit of a surprise to me. Mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be Stephanie this past weekend, but I would love to see Stephanie, see all three of them get awards because all three of them deserve it, I think. Definitely. Jamie Lee Curtis is probably the weakest out of the three, which is why I think that was why I was a bit of a surprise. But yeah, it would be really cool to see Angela win for a Marvel movie. I think that would be big for Marvel as mm-hmm. well for her. I love Angela Bassett. But I'm with you. I re- I'm rooting for Stephanie to shoot it um, yeah. for the Oscar. Yeah, cool. And then for Best Lead Actor, we've got Austin Butler, Colin Farrell, Brendan Fraser, Paul Mescal, and Bill Nighy. I've only seen one... <laughs> one of these movies so what are your thoughts on best actor this this is not going to be my strong suit (laughs) i have seen clips of the whale i've seen banshees and i've seen elvis i think that going into this one it's between austin butler and brendan fraser okay brendan fraser won the sag and austin butler won the golden globe i think austin butler was more of the runaway favorite going Mm -hmm. in early on but i think Brendan Fraser is just so popular and so loved within the industry. I wouldn't be surprised to see him win. And the clips I have seen from The Whale uh, are just phenomenal. He's so good. And he's probably the easily the best part of that film. And as for Austin mm-hmm. Butler, I didn't love Elvis. His performance was good, I thought. I don't think it was great. But I, this is kind of – it feels like a weaker year for lead mm-hmm. actor. So I'm probably going to be rooting for Brendan Fraser at the Oscars. Yeah, same for me. I think I, you know, like I said, I've only seen Banshees of Inna Sharon on this list. So Colin Farrell, of course, is amazing in pretty much every movie he touches. Um, I have heard amazing things about After Sun, though, like uh, amazing that an A24 
movie is getting another nomination outside of everything everywhere all at once you know being the top contender so seeing paul mescal get a nomination for after sun is really cool um but yeah i I feel like brendan frazier it's his year and he is kind of like our comeback kid aside from uh key being you know in everything everywhere all at once and then upcoming things this year i think brendan frazier I think it's safe to say he's got it in the bag, but I don't know. I would agree. You never know. <laughs> Speaking of Ki Hu Kwan, mm-hmm. we have the Best Supporting Actor Award with Ki Barry Keoghan. Judd Hirsch, <laughs> Ryan Tyree Henry, and Brendan Gleeson. I think this is a pretty obvious one. I think this is Key's award to lose. He's won both the Golden Globe and the SAG for this role, and he deserves it more than anyone else on this list. He is fantastic. Every time I hear him speak, I am bawling my eyes out. I he know. Is a presence. I love him, and I really cannot wait to hopefully see him win this award. What Me, do you think? I'm in the same boat here. It, it's, it's a runaway, I think, at this point. Brendan Gleeson is very good in Banshees of Sharon. He's very cold in it and it's like kind of makes me uncomfortable how good it it was um i also just want to highlight really quick brian tyree henry getting nominated again for another a24 movie i think it went straight to apple tv um so i didn't i don't have apple tv yet so i have yet to watch this but i have heard it's very good him and jennifer lawrence but it's it's key like you said it's keys i think it's his oscar to lose at this point he was he, it, he was phenomenal like everyone talks yeah. about it's it's his year and it's everything but he put in that work to be so good in this movie like i his performance might be my favorite in the whole movie like of course michelle yo oh, phenomenal agree. stephanie shu phenomenal jamie lee curtis phenomenal everybody is great in that movie but his performance alone is it just makes me cry every time <laughs> He's just a little ball of charisma. And yes. You don't want to take your eyes off him. I love him so much. I cannot wait to see what he does upcoming projects. I know we'll see him in Loki season two. Right. In the summer. I am so excited. And another win for everything, ever all at once would continue to put a smile on my face. Yeah. Um, and so, again, leading into the next category with best lead actress, which is probably my favorite category at this point. Um, we have, of course, Michelle Yeoh, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. We have Kate Blanchett for Tar, which I want to talk about in a sec. Um, Anna de Armas for Blonde. Uh, Andrea Riseborough, I hope I said that right, in Two Leslie, which I didn't even hear of uh, until the nominee, uh, nominations came out. And then Michelle Williams for The Fableman. So what are your thoughts here? Because I know you've, you've caught up on a couple movies this weekend. <laughs> In the contrary to the best lead actor race, I think this is one of the more competitive best lead actress races we've seen in a long time. Kate Blanchett in Tar is so damn good. She carries that movie on her back. It's a very dialogue heavy movie. And without Kate Blanchett, that does not work. But it worked so phenomenal with her. I was obsessed with her performance mm-hmm. in that movie. As I was with Michelle Yeoh and everything everywhere at once, she's so great in that movie. She's obviously won the Golden Globe and the SAG Mm -hmm. for performance. And Michelle Williams was, the clips I've seen from the Fablemans, she is phenomenal in that too. Michelle Williams is a great actress. She always brings a lot of emotion and power to her roles. But out of those three, which I think are the three, I would say, main contenders for this award, I think it's Michelle Yeoh's race to lose again. I mm-hmm. think she's won the Golden Globe. She's won the SAG. I think Everything Ever All Once is going to win so many awards this year, and I really would love to see her win that award. Like Key, she is on top of the world right now, and I would love to see her win this award. What do you think? I Yeah, I definitely agree. I do just want to highlight Kate Blanchett, though. She is phenomenal in Tar. And that movie, I feel like, even though it is an Oscar contender and it's like a movie that I feel like is made for the Oscars, it's kind of flown under the radar. Like I don't see too many people talking about it on Twitter or on social media. Um, Maybe I'm just not that deep in the film Twitter, I guess. I feel like I'm pretty deep, but uh, (laughs) maybe not. But um, it's got to go to either her or Michelle Yeoh. I, I think it's gonna be Michelle Yeoh. There's 
no reason she shouldn't win this. Um, I will say I, I've heard that Anna de Armas was really good in Blonde. I don't want to watch the movie, just, you know, in spite of what everyone is saying about it, you know, about it being very harmful and very just not yeah. what people were expecting uh, of another Marilyn Monroe quote unquote documentary or biopic. Um, but I've heard she's f fantastic in it. So that's pretty cool that she got an Oscar nomination anyways, but I do agree. I think it's going to be Michelle. I, she's just for this type of movie to even be nominated is amazing as well. Just so off the wall and so deep. I think she should win it. I think so too. And I definitely agree. Ana de Armas is so talented for how young she is. I cannot wait. This is definitely not her last nomination at the Oscars. I'm sure we'll be talking about her again. But yeah, I definitely think this is Michelle's yeah. award to win. Which leads us to the best director, Slate, which we have Martin McDonough from The Banshees of Anna Sharon, Daniels from Everything Ever All at Once, Steven Spielberg for The Tablemans, Todd Field for Tar, and Ruben Ostalon, I hope I said that right, for Triangle of Sadness. Jade, what, who do you think is going to take home best director? I have a feeling just because it's the Oscars that Steven Spielberg is going to take it home. Um, he's already won a Golden Globe for it. I just feel like, kind of like what I said with Tar, it is a movie that's almost made for the Oscars, which I, I know everybody still loves this movie as well. Um, but I mean, Steven Spielberg is one of the best to do it regardless. It would be amazing to see the Daniels win it for everything, everywhere, all at once, just because of what they both brought to this movie and what they did with it. Um, of course, I'd love to see Todd Field also win for Tar because that movie for being so dialogue heavy and being two and a half hours, my eyes were glued to the screen the entire time. Um, I didn't get a chance to see Triangle of Sadness, uh, but you know I've heard pretty good things about it. And the uh, Banshees of Sharon is beautiful. It's a, it's a very beautifully done movie, but I just kind of feel like Steven Spielberg is the outlier <laughs> uh, in terms of what he's already done in the industry and what he's still doing. So I, I, I could see him winning, um, but I'm hoping for the, for the Daniels, <laughs> of course. In terms of best director for me, I definitely think I agree with you. I think Steven Spielberg will take it home. Honestly, these nominees are great, but I think there's a name missing. I think Gina Prince Bythewood should have gotten a nomination mm. for The Woman King. There should I be like way more nominations for that movie. Not, exactly. <laughs> I was just looking at this list and I was like, wow, for a co gender award, there's not a single woman's name on this list. And Gina Prince Bythewood totally should have been in here mm -hmm. woman king was phenomenal if i you love not that watched movie it, go check it out yeah and if you have if you want to if you're not sold yet go read my review on the website it's great and go check it out that movie should be nominated for so many more awards like mm -hmm. you said but in terms of best director i feel like this is steven spielberg's award i feel like this is almost more of like a legacy type thing like the fable men's was a movie i correct me if i'm wrong it was about his upcoming right I believe so loosely. I can't speak yeah. to it entirely, but I feel like I feel like you're right. I've I've heard something about that. So I feel like this is almost kind of like a legacy type win for would be a kind of a legacy type win for him. And I would love to see it. Obviously, like you said, one of the goats of the industry. But like I would also I love Tar. Like you said, it's hypnotizing. I would love to see Tar win that award. And Daniels too. Daniels gave up a lot to be in everything ever once. They had the Loki season one gig. And they mm -hmm. gave that up to make everything ever all at once. So I would love to see them get rewarded for that as well. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, that leads into our last big category that we're going to talk about. Um, best picture, which I think, again, this is a very stacked list. I feel like these movies are generally pretty loved this past year. Um, so we've got All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Way of Water, The Banshees of Inisharan, Elvis, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, and Women Talking. With all of these movies, CJ, where are you at? Um, so there's so many movies here I love on this list. Top Gun Maverick last year was my favorite theater experience. The nostalgia, the vibes. I saw it opening night, so the theater was packed. Everyone was excited to be there. 
it was a great experience and i love that movie and i love you glenn powell if you're listening <laughs> for other movies the fablemans won the golden globe for best drama so i feel like that's has a shot um everything ever all at once is obviously one that's going to be talked about heavily it has so many awards this is the one it has yet to win is best picture did not win any uh at the globes i really hope it wins here but avatar the way of water is also a beautifully done movie but i feel like in terms of this award specifically it's between everything everywhere all at once and the fablemans i feel like those are the two movies it's going to go between and i'm really pulling for everything Everywhere all at once just because that movie is was huge for a24 everyone that i know that has seen it including myself came out of that movie crying it's just such a powerful moving experience you can relate to it in a trillion different ways almost and like i don't know if i've seen that in a movie before where i could relate to like so many different characters at so many different times it was just also a great time it was a great theater experience i didn't see it in theaters in the initial run but when amc put all these movies back in theaters after the nominations came out i went and saw it and it was even better in theaters i regret not going when it was popular because seeing all the massive cinematography and the colors and all this beautiful moments on the large screen was just everything everywhere all at once <laughs> i really hope it wins the oscar how about you yeah i mean i'm in the same boat i've only seen uh, i'm not gonna count but i've seen probably just about half of these um i don't really have any comments on all quiet on the western front i don't really know too many people that have seen it to be honest or uh that kind of make, making that kind of noise you know on twitter and social media um, Avatar Way of the Water, I personally am not the biggest fan of it. Of course, it's beautifully done. James Cameron just continues to excel with the directing, cinematography. Um, I'm not a fan of the story because I just feel like it's the same story again from the original Avatar, which to be fair, though, I'll still go see uh, the third one and the fourth one and the fifth one probably. <laughs> Um, the Banshees the show of coming soon. I know that's what I'm. I'm of course excited for. Uh, the Banshees of Inisherin is of course very very well done. It's not. I wouldn't say it's a movie for everybody because it's pretty uh, pretty monotone, <laughs> and it's yeah, very it's just slow, slow paced the whole time. Yeah. Um, a lot of dialogue and with their thick accents. Sometimes I'm like, wait, what did they say again? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, a great movie, nonetheless, a very powerful movie, just about friendship and about growing up, essentially, even though these are grown men who are going through a friendship breakup. And that's really hard. Um, and that hit deep for me. Um, Elvis, I didn't get a chance to see. I know it's universally pretty loved. Maybe I besides you. Elvis, to be honest. <laughs> the style of it was kind of like weird for telling like a mm -hmm. biopic. It was a really weird style. I'm just, Baz Luhrmann's style isn't for me. I know okay. a lot of people love it, but I just, yeah. I'm not a huge fan of his style. Okay. And that's fair. And, you know, I feel like good biopics typically are very Oscar friendly, you know, as long as it's done well <laughs> and it gets a good uh, promotion. Um, but I still haven't seen it. Um, the Fablemans, I also have not seen, so I'm sorry I can't speak to all these movies. But again, Steven Spielberg, like you said, it's kind of a legacy type movie. Um, again, made for the Oscars, made for this type of audience. Tar, I would love to see win. I don't I think it Tar. will. Like I said, I feel like it's just flown under the radar, but I love that movie. Uh, as Ethan Simi says, I'm part of the Tar Me always <laughs> and even though spoiler lydia is not a great person not i not. still love her <laughs> <laughs> um i didn't see top gun maverick and i'm sorry if, if that offends a lot of people <laughs> because uh, i've said that i've said this a lot and people get mad at me but it's just i don't know maybe i'll watch it one day it's just not really my thing um if anything watch it for glenn powell Okay. And, yeah, yeah. That's and I actually just watched <laughs> Devotion with him, and I liked yes. him in it. So, uh, yeah. So I'll, I'll I'll give it a shot at some point. Um, Triangle of Sadness. I also have not seen. Um, I've heard pretty good things. Uh, Women talking. I have also heard good things, but not from that many people. Um, and then that just leaves me with everything, everywhere, all at once. I think 
if it doesn't win, I am going to be very upset. <laughs> but I also <laughs> understand if the Fablemans wins um, over it. That's the only one I can really see taking that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the Daniels and just what kind of uniqueness and originality they brought to this movie is incredible. I was not expecting a multiversal kung fu comedy that also wants to rip my heart in half. <laughs> so yeah. it was just so surprising. Um, that's why I like it the most and why I'm rooting for it the most. 100%. I think that movie is going to have a huge night on March 12th. I'm so excited to see the cast there having a great time, hopefully winning a lot of awards. And I'm so excited. Is there any other movies that have nominated for maybe other awards that you think should, we should spotlight? Um, well, like we said for uh, The Woman King, I am very upset that it didn't get nominated for anything. Uh, I think maybe yeah. it got some like some of the below the line nominations. I, I honestly don't know. But I mean, Viola Davis alone, I think, should have yeah. at least had a nod um Lashana Lynch as well is Lashana as a Lynch. best she was robbed. yeah as a supporting actress she was phenomenal in that movie um so good what else I think um I believe Marcel the show is shoes on I was gonna say Should for all of the awards. <laughs> best, animated. best animated yeah best animated I think we've got Marcel turning red uh Puss in, is Boots? Puss in Boots in there I think, I think it, it is. is um that's the one that I I would want, I would vote to win over, even over Marcel. I love, as you know, I love Marcel. I yes, love that movie. Love Marcel. Marcel? <laughs> Marcel, I can mind it. <laughs> but um, oh, yeah, I mean, 2022 yeah. was just a great year for movies. It was it also, was. I think, home to some of the worst movies I've seen. <laughs> um, yep. But Halloween ends. Yeah, let's not talk about that. But um. <laughs> No, 2022 was packed and I'm excited. It was a great year. Yeah, I'm excited for what 2023 has to offer because we're already off to a pretty good start. Um, yeah, yeah, so for sure, it's a it's it was a really good year for movies. Yeah. Outside of what you mentioned, I'm excited to see um, if Babylon wins anything. I know they're mm. nominated for some like costume. I love that movie with my whole heart. I would love to see it take some home, home some awards and selfishly. Mm -hmm. Rihanna is nominated for Best Original Song. That's right. And I would love to see her win just so I can see Rihanna again because she's stunning right? and I love her. Yes, and mother. I'm just really <laughs> excited for March 12th. A yeah. lot. I'm excited for the red carpet. I'm excited for a lot of it. And like you said, there's so many other movies we didn't have the chance to talk about that deserve to be in this category. And I'm stoked to see where we end up. Yeah. So Jade, where can the people find you? Oh, you know, you can find me on Twitter at Jade Rafalo. That's pretty much where I tweet all my stuff about movies. Um, you can also find all of us at Agents of Fandom on Twitter at Agents Fandom, um, TikTok Agents of Fandom, Instagram Agents of Fandom as well, and the website, which CJ mentioned before. But um, that's pretty much where you can find me. I'm not really too active anywhere else. Uh, at the moment, but uh, I've got my cocaine bear thoughts coming out on the website yeah. very soon. Here, go see cocaine bear. Yeah, go see cocaine bear solely so for for Koki because she's I love her. <laughs> Koki is the moment. Koki she is for best actress next year. Let's go. Let's started. Yes. <laughs> Well, you can find me on Twitter at CJ underscore or on the Fandom Academy podcast where we actually talk cocaine bear this week and you can find us talking The Last of Us. For more Oscars content, Ethan Simi had a great write-up on the Agents of Fandom website where you can hear his thoughts on who he thinks should be winning these awards on March 12th. And yeah, check out the Agents of Fandom website, the AOF store for some cool merch. You can check out the Listen 3000 Ticket to Reality, Agents of Phantom Podcast, anywhere you get your podcast from. And yeah, hope to talk to you guys soon. Tune into the Oscars on March 12th, and hopefully we'll see some great moments. Peace out. Woo!